Colleagues, I hope you've had a wonderful Easter break, a restful break, and uh, all ready to come back for the rest of the semester. I'm delighted to be here in the McGregor Building at the School of Biomedical Sciences, uh, an area that's been recently refurbished, and uh, I've had a chance to walk around with Nick and Kay and see the most extraordinary learning and teaching spaces. Uh, such a transformation from the kinds of spaces that I learned in when I was a student. Now I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Professor Nick Shaw, the Associate Dean Academic of the Faculty of Medicine. Hi Nick. Hello Jeff, how are you? Now maybe just before we start, if you could just say a little bit about your pathway to becoming the Associate Dean Academic in our faculty. Hmm, it's a little bit non-traditional I guess. So uh, I came to UQ in 2004, so I arrived from the University of Nottingham where I was heavily involved in the pharmacy programme. So, um, Nottingham had a Master of Pharmacy degree program and uh, I ran that program for a number of years and then came to UQ and was head of the School of Pharmacy for about ten and a half years. Since that time I've done a number of roles within the university, um, uh, latterly being uh, appointed to the position of ADA in the Faculty of Medicine from October 2017. And we're delighted to have you, Nick, and it's great that you represent an interprofessional focus for our, indeed, for our faculty. Indeed, indeed. And as you're aware, pharmacy is heavily involved in interprofessional uh, prescribing and other issues around uh, medicine supply, which is key to the MD programme, of course. So the faculty takes our learning and teaching incredibly seriously, and mm. of course you're very much involved in all of those activities. Now. At the moment, we're planning revisions of the, of the Doctor of Medicine and the Bachelor of Health Sciences. Mm. And rather than talking about the detail of those two things, what are the kind of principles that will guide our, our learning and teaching style in these new curricula? I think the principles are founded around uh, student-centred uh, learning and increasing extent of student-centred learning. Of course, that's... Um, perhaps easier to accomplish within the MD program um, because of its very nature, it tends to be hands-on and uh, patient-focused and person-centred care. Um, with the Bachelor of Health Sciences, we're working with the university to uh, undertake blended learning and uh, some of their courses within uh, public health, including some of the courses taught from the School of Biomedical Sciences, are also uh, using that uq to u platform and blended learning. So. Uh, I guess student-centred uh, focus is one. Um, also, a clear, uh, a clear pathway for students to undertake, um, so that students are very uh, aware of the majors that they're doing, or are very aware of the pathways they need to take to the destination that they're requiring. So as we sit here in a wonderful renovated space, our minds turns to the facilitation, the enablers of mm. learning. The digital space is changing the way people learn. How are we going to implement that in our new programs? So I think we have great facilities here at UQ for the delivery of uh, e-learning. Uh, we have good platforms and UQ is developing um, a curriculum management system which will take those aspects of digital learning and curriculum organisation into account. So I. I think that digital learning platform will become increasingly important for our students. But I guess we also need to be very careful that we don't ignore the, the person uh, within that, the, the excellent teachers who we have at UQ and who have received teaching and learning awards from within the faculty. Well, I think that's a good segue, Nick, to how are we supporting, acknowledging, rewarding our teachers who are absolutely critical to the business? So we have a variety of mechanisms, as I've mentioned, the uh, Teaching and Learning Awards are one. So UQ has its own Teaching and Learning Awards in a variety of categories, including an award for teaching excellence. And the faculty ha has its own Teaching and Learning Awards, and they're also mimic the UQ awards in the categories in which they're um, provided. But we also have specific awards for academic title holders, for clinicians, for researchers and for tutors. So they're specific to the faculty and it's, it's a way of rewarding um, staff who are not really full-time teachers but who contribute significantly to the student experience. We also have a, a variety of mechanisms by which we can support the education of our, um, our teachers within the faculty or educators within the faculty. 
Um, so things like uh, peer observation, where we've developed a number of templates for peer observation uh, to be encompassed within the faculty and to facilitate personal reflection of uh, staff when they've undertaken a teaching event. Those have been promulgated through the university and are now being used by the Institute for Teaching and Learning Innovation. So we're, we're part of a broader portfolio. The last thing I wanted to mention was a teaching innovation grant which we got um, as part of a, f a joint bid across uh, the Faculty of Medicine, Faculty of Health and Behavioural Sciences and the Faculty of Science. And that teaching innovation grant is uh, about educating the clinical educators, uh, about providing support for clinical educators uh, within their, their craft of uh, teaching and learning. Now, the final thing I want to ask you about is, is student well-being. I think mm. we understand um, the, the global concerns about the well-being of our students. How are we supporting students within the faculty? It's a very good question and we're seeing an increasing uh, extent of issues of mental health within our student cohort. And we have, uh, within, the, uh, within the faculty, produced a range of uh, support mechanisms. So we have um, student support uh, within the faculty office, we have uh, medical student support pathways, and there are student support pathways here at St Lucia and uh, at Hurston. It's important that we also look at uh, the mechanisms by which we can deliver support to uh, via the students themselves. So we have peer supported uh, tutorials, and uh, I guess we've instituted things like um, the Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Committee uh, to provide students with an opportunity to look at how we can best serve those uh, diverse communities within our faculty as well. And that diversity in the student cohort is, 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 is critical to enhancing the experience, I believe. Very much so, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So we, we should reflect um, our... I guess our, our student cohort, but more importantly, we should also recognise the, the population from which our student uh, cohort is drawn, and we should reflect that population as well and seek to enhance and embrace that diversity which uh, our student cohort represents. So Nick, thank you for joining me today um, in this oh, wonderful you. learning and teaching space. It's a space. fantastic setting. Thank you for your working and just acknowledging the great importance that learning and teaching plays in the life of the faculty. Thanks. Thank you.